Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 18 on July the 13th, 2018, and I'm your host, Eric. Thank you very much for listening to the show each and every week. Um, hopefully, this is of value for you and you're learning and having some fun uh, with option trading. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. Again, that's eric at theweeklyoption.com. We have a video series on our website. Um, you can also find it on YouTube. Uh, to teach you the theory behind each of the three trade types we discuss on the show each week. So go to our website at www.theweeklyoption.com and click on the videos uh, little menu in our navigation and that will take you to our 5 on 5 trading series where you can learn each of the top types of trade that we discuss each week. So let's dive into the show this week. Uh, Let's see this past week. Uh, this this was a strong week in the market. The Dow Jones Industrial Index finished the week roughly 563 points higher, uh, closing at 25,019 points. The S&P 500 Index had similar strength, ending the week 41 points higher at 2,801 points. This week, we will see earnings from several companies. We're back in earnings season. On Monday, we will hear from Bank of America, BlackRock, and Netflix. On Tuesday, we'll be watching uh, the results for Interactive Brokers, CSX Corporation, one of the big uh, railroad companies in the nation, uh, Progressive Corp, and Charles Schwab as well will be on Tuesday. We also will hear from United Health Group, Goldman Sachs, Kinder Morgan, and Johnson & Johnson on Tuesday. So Tuesday will be a big earnings day. On Wednesday, I'll be watching American Express, Alcoa Group, Abbott Labs, eBay, and then Morgan Stanley. On Thursday, Thursday we'll hear from Blackstone Group, Union Pacific Railroad, and E-Trade, the uh, brokerage. And then on Friday, we'll finish the week off looking at General Electric or GE. So it should be a, uh, a good week for earnings. And uh, as we know, earnings tend to provide great um, opportunities for a little additional volatility or not, but regardless, some opportunities for trading. So uh, let's, let's take a look at last week's trades. They uh, It was a good week in trading. Um, all right, we'll start with the covered call. We looked at Southwest Airlines, symbol L-U-V, love. You have to say it that way, love. Uh, finished the week at 50, I'm sorry, when we looked at the trade last week, the stock was trading for $52.74, and we looked at selling the August 55 call and collecting $1.15 with the hope of, of earning a return of roughly 6.5%, um, you know, through August expiration, uh, which I believe is on the 17th or some, somewhere along those lines. Um, Southwest Airlines stock uh, is 35 cents higher week over week. So it finished higher on the week. And this means that the strategy is currently working. Right, so we've sold a call against stock that we own. We want the stock to go higher. So the call option is five cents higher um, if we were to close the trade out today. So between the 35 cents that we earned in our stock that we own and the call option being five cents higher, if we were to close that trade, and just as a side note, to close that trade, you'd have to actually lift the offer. And I'll discuss at some point bid-ask spreads um, in a future training. But if you were to fully close that position, you would lock in $0.30 cents per share um, between the $0.05 cents that you lost in selling that call option but the $0.35 cents that you gained in the stock. That $0.30 cents equals about $30 per, per 100 shares. So I would stay in this trade until expiration in August or until the stock makes a move towards the break even point. If it moves towards the break even point, then I would look, I would start looking at locking in profit. But as of right now, it's doing exactly what we want it to do. So let's let it keep going. Our next trade on the week was a credit spread. We looked at the gold ETF, symbol GLD, 
George Larry David. Uh, that symbol was trading for $118.86 last weekend when we looked at it. And we sold the August 120, 121 call spread, collecting 30 cents for selling that spread. It's a $1 spread, so we know that our maximum loss is 70 cents. Well, the gold ETF finished the week $1.25 lower, so this worked out well for selling a call spread. Now, while the individual options themselves are roughly cut in half, I mean, they lost nearly half their value week over week, the spread itself only finished $0.09 cents lower. So we sold this $1 call spread for $0.30. Cents. The spread is currently worth $0.21 cents per share. We could close this trade out right now and capture 9 out of $0.30, cents, right? Um, that's not bad. That's, you know, almost almost uh, a third of our expected return we could lock in right now in one week. Or, of course, we could stay in the, tr in the spread and let it track lower. I'm of the uh, sort of if it's working the way we planned, you know, leave it alone camp. So I would let the spread continue to decay away, allowing allowing me to keep more money, more of the money that I collected when I entered the spread. So again, this spread is working. There's no reason to get antsy and close it out. But if you did decide to close it, you're going to go ahead and lock in a nine cent gain on 30 cents possible gain. So you're basically taking on, you know, locking in just shy of 33%, um, a little more than 30, uh, yeah, just shy of 33% of your maximum gain. So you won't go broke taking a profit. And then our final trade, this was the winner for the week. Uh, we looked at Pepsi. Um, Pepsi had earnings this past week. And when we looked at the stock, the stock was trading $109.56. We looked at buying the July 108-109 call spread for $0.68. Cents. So since this is a $1 call spread and we are paying $0.68, cents, our goal is to make $0.32 cents on this spread. Now, the Stebbit spread ended up being the trade of the week, like I said. Uh, given that Pepsi was about to announce earnings, it was a bit of a risky trade. That's why I looked at the stock's history after earn after each of its earning announcements, um, before even recommending re recommending the trade, and I think I mentioned that on mentioned that on the show last week. So Pepsi stock finished the week three dollars thirteen cents higher, which means that our in the money call spread that we bought is even more in the money. We paid sixty eight cents for the spread, expecting it to be worth one dollar in two weeks, uh, because we know July expiration is uh, on July twentieth. And now that spread is worth 90 cents in the market. So that means we made 22 cents week over week. And we know that over the next week, we're going to collect that final 10 cents. Um, that, you know, this spread will finish at uh, being valued roughly a dollar as long as stock stays higher than $109. And right now it's well above that. So that means making 32 cents or $32 on $68 of risk. So how many other places can you make 47% in two weeks while still having limited risk? All right, the, the risk is capped at, the most we can lose is what we paid for the spread. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I love options. So people always ask me, you know, why options? Why aren't you in, you know, name it. Why aren't you in bonds? Why aren't you looking at, you know, swing trading stock? Why aren't you trading cryptocurrencies? Why aren't you doing all sorts of things? The way I present, the way I look at option trading and the way I present option trades to the market is that option trading is really about math. And if you understand the math behind it and you understand the way risk uh, functions and how risk affects each option that you put on, then you can really set yourself up to make some money. You can create uh, spread ideas that truly um, limit risk and give you upside that you like. And that's my whole goal. I don't want to just buy stock and hope it goes up. I don't want to sell stock and hope it goes down. I'd rather know right off the bat, you know, here's my maximum gain, here's my maximum loss, and that lets me position the trade according to the capital that I'm willing to put up. So, you know, you could put a 10 lot up on this spread, um, this Pepsi spread. Let's say you had bought 10, so you spent $680 in order to make $320. What if you decided to buy a hundred of them, right? So you put up uh, $6,800 
and you would have made $2,200 this past week on $6,800. So uh, again, it's all mathematics. And oftentimes when I'm looking at the values of these spreads, I'm not taking the midpoint of the bid ask spread. I'm actually paying the offer and selling the ask. And basically what that means is I'm crossing the spread. I'm giving the market maker the exact value that they said they'll trade on. The reality of it is typically when I place an order, I'm, I'm trying to middle the market. I'm trying to, to get that market maker to negotiate a little better price than even the prices that I discuss on this show. So, um, I'm trying, I do that really to try and make sure that things are fair. Um, I'm not trying to win, uh, based on, based on, you know, um, doing midpoints of the spreads and, you know, uh, talking hypothetically. All I'm doing is looking at the same prices that you yourselves can go in the market and look at and confirm that I'm, you know, keeping it all legit. So, uh, feel free to do that. Of, of course, if you have any questions, email me. My email is eric at theweeklyoption.com and I would love to hear from you. And with that being said, let's look at the trades for this week. So uh, our three trades this week, we're going to start off with the covered call on advanced micro devices, symbol AMD, Apple Mary David. The stock right now is trading for $16.27 and I'm looking at selling the August 17 call at 85 cents. Now, if we, you know, earn the additional, what would that be, 73 cents in the stock, um, going from 1627 up to 17, and we keep that 85 cents, net net, we're looking at a possible return of 9.71%, or just shy of 10% in five weeks. Not bad for, uh, you know, for trading stock, right? 10% in five weeks. Um, it also, that 85 cents that we receive or that we collect when we sell that call also creates a nice little buffer for our stock position. So, um, our break even point is going to be significantly lower, which is great. Our next spread, we're going to look at the credit spread that we look at each week. Uh, this time we're looking at eBay, uh, symbol Edward Bill Apple Yellow, EBAY. Uh, the stock finished the week at $37.61. And this is an earnings week. They have earnings. I think it was on Tuesday. I mentioned a little earlier in the show. And if you look at their previous earnings, they have not, uh, have not wowed the market. In fact, there was a significant drop around their last earnings. So I'm expecting the same for, for this stock and also a continuation of the stock's current retracement. It appears to be retracing part of the last big move, which would have the stock going significantly lower than where it is now. So. I'm looking at selling the 38, the July 38 half 39 call spread and collecting 14 cents. Uh, that creates a maximum loss of, of 36 cents, but realize this is a one week long trade. It's purely for earnings. So if this works out next week, I look like a genius. If it doesn't, well, then it's 36 cents loss or, or thereabouts. But just know that, um, when I'm, if I put on a trade, that I tell you is a riskier trade, especially a one week long trade, because that means that we don't have any real time to make another decision. We don't have time to make any adjustments in this trade. It either is going to win or it's going to lose. So I don't buy, I'm not going to buy, or in this case, sell 100 of these spreads. I'm really going to keep it small, keep it down to an amount that I'm willing to, that I'm willing to lose. So Maybe I sell 10 of them knowing that I can lose 360 bucks in order to make 140 bucks. That may sound like a bad trade, but given that I'm expecting stock to continue going down, I think this will work out for me. And then my final trade is also going to be another risky trade. Maybe I'm just feeling risky because all three trades last week worked, but I like making expiration week trades. And this upcoming Friday, July the 20th, is July expiration. So I'm looking at ConocoPhillips, symbol C-O-P, Charlie Oscar Phillip. I probably could have used a different P word. How about Paul? Um, the stock finished the week right at $72 per share. I'm looking at buying the 71, 71 half call spread and in the money call spread paying 36 cents. So this is a 50 cent spread. I'm paying 36 cents for the spread, um, knowing that 
are expecting it to finish the end of the week uh, being worth 50 cents. So one week long trade, I'm trying to make 14 cents or roughly a 39% return on my investment. And for this as well, I'll probably put on like a 10 lot or something like that because again, it's a one week long trade. I don't want to bet the house even though I truly believe on the spread. Um, I don't. I never want to bet the house on any single trade, especially a trade that I'm not going to get a second chance or an adjustment period on. So trade accordingly. Always, always, always trade according to your own capital availability and your own risk tolerance. And I do the same. That'll keep you from going crazy uh, trading over the years. So that's it for this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I really do enjoy making this for you. I hope you're learning. And for those of you who do want to learn a little bit more, I'll be presenting a webinar here shortly and telling you about a, uh, a special a special uh, training group that I'm putting together to learn how to trade options. So feel free to email me at eric at theweeklyoption.com. Again, eric at theweeklyoption.com. Thanks again for listening to the show. Have an awesome weekend, a great week, and uh, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.